gonna share with you our American culture shocks in Germany. So hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah of MyMerryMessyLife.com and this is... Hey, I'm Kevin. And we are parents of four children, ages four to 11, and... A cat. A cat. And we moved to Germany from America in February 2021, and we're just trying to restart our lives and do new and exciting things and uh, see what it's life like to live here in Germany. Yeah. So today we want to share with you 10 culture shocks we've had as Americans here in Germany. And this is mostly because I did a poll and said, what are you guys wanting us to do videos about? And a whole bunch of people said German culture shocks. So for us, I hope these culture shocks will be different than a lot of the other videos you've seen on YouTube. Because for Kevin and I, a lot of the things that are done here in Germany, we're used to because Kevin lived in France for five years and Sweden for five years. Mm -hmm. And I lived in France for two years. And so we knew a lot of the things <laughs> about how ready. Europe and ready Europe. for some of those things. Yeah. And I know that there are definitely cultural differences and everything else between the different countries in Europe, but there are things that are the same, like needing to know, you know, the train and bus schedules and, you know, things in, in France are actually, there's a lot of similarities. Like you got to be quiet when you're in public and quiet on the trains. And so some of the things that a lot of other Americans experience when they come to Germany or even other European countries is that when you go to the grocery store, you have to bring your own bags. You're not given any bags. You have to buy your bags. They're trying to save on plastic and be good for the environment. You go guys, that's the right move. America needs to get on that. <laughs> you, you don't get any plastic bags in the grocery stores. And in every store, you have to bag your own groceries as well. You don't get much customer service when you go to stores in France or Germany. Uh, I'm sure it's like that probably in a few other European countries, but it's just not, they just kind of leave you alone, which I like. <laughs> I'm kind of happy, like leave me alone and let me shop. <laughs> so it just depends on your personality. Uh, there's no public restrooms generally in Europe. You've got to go to the downtown city center or the village center in our case to the rat house and um, pay your 20 cents to uh, use the restroom. Stores don't really offer public restrooms. You've got to plan ahead for going to, to the restroom before you go somewhere. So those were not culture shocks for us. We were we knew all those things. We've lived those things before. So number one for us uh, was the German school supplies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was uh, you know very daunting. Just all of the words Feder Mepschen and yeah, all these Fetter different Mepschen. things. I, I, I we're think like that's we're right. like what is that? <laughs> Uh, but then they need a fountain pen and yes. then they need these fine liners and colored pencils and watercolor paints and, yes, and a compass, supplies. a compass and, uh, and a ruler mm -hmm. and all the right lengths and all, yeah, so lots of, lots of different stuff. So that was pretty interesting yes. to have to get. And we, we didn't know what we were supposed to get until we put it into Amazon. We just had to put the yeah. words directly from the piece of paper into Amazon. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, that's what Feder Mepchen is or whatever it's called. <laughs> So school supplies, and they had to be correct. The teachers were like, this must be correct. Yeah, I got lots of notes. Well, you know, such and such kid does not have X, Y, Z. Still doesn't have X, Y, Z. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I'm trying. We feel like we're being sent to the principal's <laughs> office. <laughs> sorry, we're the dumb foreigners who don't know what we're doing. And all the stores are closed, and I have to wait two days for yes, Amazon to deliver it. Exactly, all the stores are closed. <laughs> where, where are we supposed to get this stuff? So number two is also something that has to do with school. In fact, the first several of these are all going to be culture shocks that come with school. Since that's been a huge part of our experience here in transferring to Germany is our kids going to different schools in different languages. The second thing is neatness in handwriting in the schools and how important neatness is. Yeah, all the little it's lines. more than in the US. Lines have to be drawn with your ruler. With your, yeah, uh, they make with, them draw with, with a ruler. I mean, I was used to that in engineering school. That we, we had right. a lot of that. In engineering Where, you know, school. They would make sure make yes. sure you do all that right and draw all your letters the right height and everything. Right. But they, not when you're seven years old. I know, they're doing in that elementary in, in elementary school. school, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great that they're teaching them neatness, but we had to get used to it. We didn't, you know, our kids would just sort of scribble out stuff like they'd done in the U.S. and we would get notes back from the teachers. Yeah. You need to make your kids write more neatly. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> So then number three is needing to have house shoe at school. Definitely. That was the number. They, they mentioned that right away. got to have your house shoe at school. Which took um, us several weeks to get. And that was a big mess. It but was a big anyway. mess. But yeah. But we got that settled now. <laughs> um, but even having them at home and taking your shoes off when you go into somebody's house yep. and making sure that our kids know that they need to take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of neat. 
Oh, and I have a question for all of you. I have heard from some people that you should have extra house shoes in your house for when guests come over. Hmm. And is that really true? Is that, do, do many of you do that? Because I was like, well, then you'd have to have, what, what sizes would you get, you know? And, and do you need kids size? Do you need adult size? Do you need... <laughs> I was just like, I don't know how that works. So let us know. Yeah, maybe just, maybe they're like sort of like sandals or flip-flop type things where you oh. don't like fit your heel in, maybe. I don't know, then it doesn't have to be the exact size. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And number four is school recess. It happens in the rain, the snow, it doesn't matter the weather, the kids <laughs> will go outside, which we think is awesome yeah. and we totally agree with, but we were not prepared for that. And as you've heard in our school video, <laughs> which I'll link up here, I think it is, <laughs> um, you can go check that out or it's in the description box below. But we mentioned in that video that um, we have sent our kids to school without snow pants and snow boots before, and they have come back home soaking wet. <laughs> and our daughter, Ella, she's four, and she's getting more settled into kindergarten. And um, I was just taking her there yesterday, and there were signs all over the place. Eltern, don't forget your Reagan yaka and your Reagan hosa. <laughs> and I was like, oh crap, I didn't bring Ella's Reagan hosa. Ella does have a pair. We're good American parents trying to pretend like we're good Germans. We do have rain pants for Ella, but uh, I didn't bring them that day, of course. And then I brought them yesterday and they didn't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we got a note, we, and then we got notes from the teacher. She must have a rain jacket. And then the teachers gave me very specific instructions on the type of backpack that Ella should have. It needs to be a, a kinder size backpack, which is about this big, and it has to have a chest buckle because it's not good or safe for little children to be, you know, without their back support. I totally agree with, but I wasn't used to that. So I had to make sure when I bought their, her backpack that it had a chest strap. So number five is Germans are serious about their bicycling. Uh, right? You know, in America, you know, maybe kids might have a bike when they're yeah. young and they can ride around in the cul-de-sac, cul you in know, the driveway. <laughs> in the driveway. Do, 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 do. Um, but here, it's a way of life, and they're serious. Yeah. And uh, at least it's, it's more so in Bavaria, I've been told. Oh, really? So let us know, Germans. Mm. Is there a lot of bicycling for fun where you live too? In Bavaria, people bicycle all the time. It's they're everywhere yeah. all the time. I mean, my uh, one of my colleagues is saying and takes their five and seven year old kids on thirty kilometer long bike rides. Thirty kilometers? Yeah. Are you exaggerating? <laughs> no, I am not exaggerating. Oh That's dead serious. Five and, and how, seven year olds. Five and seven. Yeah. And our other friends, they they just took their kids to see Oma and Opa, and it was eleven kilometers one way. Yeah. And then through right. the mountains, okay, yeah. <laughs> through the mountains, riding their little bicycles, six and eight years old. Yeah. So they're serious, serious about their bicycles. And I was a noob in a, in a lot of ways, I guess, in terms of uh, assembling the bikes. And you guys made sure that I, <laughs> and we, we had that footage of showing the bikes with the forks turned around. And I mean, we've had we people on the street. We have gotten slammed for that yeah, on YouTube. But it's, it's really great, you know, and, uh, you know, making sure that everything's right and everything's safe. Mm -hmm. um, and like knowing, I guess there's rules on what age kids can ride their bikes on the sidewalk. Is it yes. 10? We've been told it's 10, been but I've never told seen that, that like, officially. That if you're under 10, they can ride on the sidewalks, but if they're over 10, they're supposed to be on the street, uh, ride on the street instead of the sidewalk. So still trying to figure all of that out. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, serious about the bicycles. It's pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> yes. Okay, so number six is Bavarian traditional tricked. Okay, in our first video, <laughs> we're totally going to, what is it, roast ourselves or... Yeah own up to our ignorance on it. <laughs> well, there's a new trendy word for it, but I can't remember what it is. It's not roast, because I well, know that's an old word. <laughs> we're aging ourselves here. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna totally own up to this mistake. In our very first video where we say, we're moving to Germany, Kevin's got a fake Bavarian hat on, and uh, we were drinking Weiss beer, but it was not in the correct cup. We got slammed for both of those things. <laughs> well, you call it a Stein. I called it a beer Stein. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so we made two big uh, German <laughs> faux pas, and we have we're still getting views and comments on this video for Kevin wearing that hat, and they're yeah. like they're like for the love of God, please take off that ridiculous <laughs> hat. That is not like representative of Germany, and and you're so right. Uh, Bavaria does not represent most of Germany. Um, it only represents Bavaria. So for our American viewers, lederhosen, you know, the suspenders with the little strap, 
um, and the shorts, that's what the men wear. And the women wear uh, dirndls, and that's the, that's the dress. And then all of it is called trekt, okay? So each little region in town sometimes has different trekt that represents that town. So what we ended up doing was basically cultural appropriation, which is being called out a lot in the United States right now. It's a really a big deal going on socially, you know, and people are talking about how it's wrong for someone on the outside to take a little piece of someone's culture and cheese it up. You yeah, know? And make it sort of like a costume, you know. Make it like a costume. Instead of, you know, authentic. And, and the person wearing that costume doesn't even know what it is that the costume represents and how special it is to the people you have just taken it from. Just like Americans have been taking Native American ceremonial wear for hundreds of years and turning it into these like silly costumes and they're taking something that's sacred to Native Americans and turning it into something that is cheap and tacky and you're not honoring what it originally represented and still represents to many people today. So we stepped our foot in it when we, when Kevin wore the hat, we didn't realize how important and special the Bavarian Trecht is to so many Bavarians yeah. and that it doesn't represent all of Germany. We did know that it didn't represent all of Germany. We did know it was a Bavarian thing. But, but we were moving to Bavaria. We were moving to Bavaria. Yeah, we were moving to Bavaria, yeah. So, so we knew that. <laughs> we weren't totally clueless. But we were somewhat clueless. So even we, we feel like we're pretty woke people. So that took us aback. We were like, oh my gosh, we still have more to learn. Yep. You know, you're never um, completely there. You always have more to learn about other people and to realize, hey, you should be careful before making fun of somebody else's traditional clothing and ceremonial wear and be really careful mm -hmm. how you wear it and how you represent it. And maybe go read a book about it first or watch some YouTube videos about it first. and before you wear it. So number seven is being quiet on trains and being quiet in, in public in general. Uh, Which you we, know, knew we, we knew, came. but we weren't yeah. sure. We didn't live that with our children and you know. Yes, we'd only lived here <laughs> without children before. Yeah. And you know, our, our our household is is loud and boisterous as it is, so it always takes us a little time to calm down the kids and say, okay, no, we're not gonna be loud. We're not gonna punch each other in the middle of the street. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, so so that, yeah. that, that's been something we've been working on. Yes, every time before we get on the trains, Kevin has been like, okay, kids, this is a calm and quiet place. You're not going to talk loudly. You're not going to run around. You're going to sit in your seat. You're not going to put your You're feet up on the behave. seat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be respectful. And it's been working. They've been behaving yeah. very well on the yeah, trains. for sure. <laughs> Number eight is airing out the house. Now, before we came to Germany, we already knew we were going to have to air out the house. We'd watched so many really <laughs> good YouTube videos on it. In fact, I want to mention one from Passport to Two, Donnie and Aubrey's video on Luften and airing out the house. And um, I learned so much from it and I watched many others that I'm sorry I can't remember but that one definitely stood out we knew we we're gonna have to air out the house we used to do it in France but we didn't really do it as a ritual right. we didn't do it every single morning and so we started to notice or I did that there was sort of like a black film on the tiles in our bathroom and I knew immediately that was mold so I wiped it all down and sure enough the cloth was black so we talked to some of our friends and they're like, are you airing out the house every single morning? And we're like, well, no, we just basically only air it out when it's like warm enough. Um, or after every bath. Or every after, we, yeah, we, we were, were good about that after, after every the, shower. That's true. We were doing it after every bath and shower. So since then, we've been airing out our house every single morning. I really love it. I've acclimated to the cold. We came from Georgia, which is really hot. And I've acclimated to the cold and I love that fresh, chilly air in the morning. I think it's fantastic now and I look <laughs> forward to airing out the house. Uh, in fact, Kevin comes behind me sometimes and shuts the doors because he thinks it's, or shuts the windows because he thinks it's Well, we don't need to leave cold. it open. No, it's not that it's too cold, it's that it's been open too long. We haven't turned the heating down. Anyway. <laughs> well, I do turn the heating down. Yeah. Uh, but but maybe I miss, I do miss some now and again. <laughs> anyway, so airing out the house is serious business and it must be done well. And we noticed in our video where we talk about having no dryer, 10, I think it was the video, 10 things we had in America, but don't have in Germany. I said that we don't have a dryer here and I'll link to that up here and down there. Um, 
and it was so funny the comments i mean i got massive amounts of comments about who has a dryer and who doesn't and we did a poll later on and it turns out about 40 percent of you do have a dryer 60 percent did not have a dryer and you you all mentioned um luften and airing out your house and how you love to have your clothes airing outside and how you just love fresh air so i think that's really great and number nine is the opening hours for stores now, we did know, of course, that Sundays, basically everything is closed. All the bakeries, it's really nice. You can always go to the bakery yes, on Sunday bakeries morning. bakeries are still <laughs> open here from 7 yeah. to 10 in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. Ending on, on holidays, too. Uh, so we knew yeah. that on Sunday you can't go to the grocery store, but it's been a lot more than that, at least here in our little small town. Every every so every funny. place seems to have a, a day of the week that's it's okay. you know it's Ruitag it's uh, it's uh, like day day of rest uh, that's not Sunday and here it's it's Mittwoch on Wednesday so basically mm -hmm. every store is closed on Wednesdays mm -hmm. so it's closed on Sundays closed on on Wednesdays at least the grocery store doesn't have a Ruitag at least oh thank goodness <laughs> thank goodness oh gosh uh, but all the stores they they have have are around here they're closed on Wednesdays as well. Um, and then they're often closed in the middle of the day. Uh, there might be, like for lunch, they might be closed. Yes. Um, you know, and they might close at two in the afternoon. They might not be open, open very uh -huh. late in the afternoon. Uh, and and then, some of them are only open from three to 6 p.m. Yeah, right, or whatever, you know, you just never know. <laughs> you never and know. there's been several stores we've gone to and you just show up to and there's a little note, handwritten, like handwritten note, note on the door. Closed today, we'll be opening tomorrow yeah. at such and such a time. <laughs> it's so very charming. quaint, yeah, it's, like it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. And then last but not least, number 10, all products, of course, are in German as they should be. But that was a big culture shock for me at first, which it may not sound like that would be a culture shock. So what I found is that when I go to the store, it takes me a lot longer to buy things because I have to get out my German Translate app and try to understand some of the things. Like it took me a while to understand what Backpulver is and how that's <laughs> different from Natron. For baking, that's um, baking powder and baking soda. And so I had to figure all of that out. I had to ask questions on Instagram and get help for it and finally figured that out. And then when we first moved here, I was deliriously tired. I was so out of my mind with, with exhaustion. And I started using the dishwashing tablets in the laundry. <laughs> we had a hundred of them. Our, our, um, our relocation agent got us a big box of a hundred of them. So for one, the first 100 washes of all of our clothes, we were using dishwashing tablets. <laughs> and I always thought our clothes felt a little stiff and weren't quite getting clean like I wanted them to. And now that I have actual laundry detergents, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally bought dishwashing rinse aid to use as dishwashing detergent. And I kept wondering why our dishes weren't getting clean enough. Well, it's because the rinse aid was in there. and not... <laughs> So just things. Rookie mistakes. Yeah. Like there were some things I didn't translate because I thought, oh, oh surely I got it. this is dishwashing detergent. It looks right. Right. It looks right. It's got a little shiny glass on it Ding. and stuff. Yeah. Surely this is the right thing. No, it wasn't. And so that's definitely been an adjustment. And really all of these culture shocks aren't really shocks. Um, but they are, you know, big adjustments that took us a while to figure out and to muddle our way through. So, and, and one thing that we've left off. Yeah, so there, thing. there's one thing that we didn't put on here that definitely was a culture shock is handling all the recycling and all the different types of recycling streams. And we purposely left that off because that's such a big deal. We're going to do a whole another whole yes. video just on going to the Wachstoffhof, <laughs> the recycling center and figuring all of that out. Yes. So Yeah, so even though we prided ourselves on knowing European life <laughs> and, and having done a ton of research before we came, we watched so many videos mm -hmm. from Germans and immigrants and expats and whatever living in Germany and I feel like I, I knew so much before I came but to live it yeah and to walk through it was totally different yeah, yeah. and there's very few videos if any that I've seen on YouTube about adjusting to the school changes except maybe from uh, my friend Antoinette Emily the New Zealander who lives in Germany um, she does have some stuff about the differences of school and I watched all of her videos on that <laughs> and if you want more help you should go to her channel too but um yeah, school was a huge adjustment. So yeah, it was. anyway, we've been talking long enough now. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you liked this video. If you did, we'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. Let us know what you think about our culture shocks down below. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. And uh, yeah, talk to you.
talk to you later. Cheers. Cheers.